Hello there, and welcome to the Construction Revolution Podcast. My name is Eric Yee, and here on the show, we explore the latest trends, technologies, people, and organizations that are revolutionizing or disrupting the construction industry and changing what the industry will look like tomorrow. Today on the show, I'm speaking with the co-founder and CTO of GTEC, Dr. Ali Alizadeh, who has over 15 years of experience in the research, development, and commercialization of technologies and solutions related to concrete materials. He brings a unique perspective on the performance and durability of concrete at a nano level, particularly when it relates to the infrastructure exposed to harsh environmental conditions. Working closely with early technology adopters in the construction industry, he has developed a deep understanding on the design of innovative solutions that can address the productivity challenges in the industry. His work has been recognized by several awards, including the Governor General's Academic Gold Medal of Canada, Ottawa's 40 Under 40, and the University of Ottawa Alumni Entrepreneur of the Year. Ali, I'd like to start off by going back uh, 10 years prior to the start of Geotech. Could you walk us through what you were doing at the time and what caused you to start the company? Yeah, so it was uh, it was an interesting time for us. Uh, uh, both myself and my business partner, Dr. Poria Kovitz, we were doing our PhDs at that time. And uh, we were so much deep into the research uh, on the concrete side and corrosion of uh, rebar in the concrete. And uh, together, I think we had about almost 100 journal papers published uh, in this area. And um, when we finished our PhD uh, studies, uh, we realized that there's a huge gap between what we were doing in academia mm. and what was happening in the industry. Unfortunately, at that point, uh, there was a bridge collapse that, uh, that happened in Montreal, Canada, that, uh, that killed two people. And it was so sad to see that uh, we're doing so much research and we're understanding the nature of concrete and we can uh, predict its behavior um, at the at the research level, but in practice, uh, these uh, methods and solutions are not really applied. So we decided to establish Geotech to bring some of those technologies to the market and build tools and solutions and easy to use devices that can be used by uh, various stakeholders during the life cycle of concrete with better assessment of concrete quality and prediction of its properties so that they can make informed decisions and hopefully we can prevent these kinds of incidents from happening. Do you find that that's, um, th- do you find that there's always a large chasm even today between academia and what's going on in practical applications? There is a still a big gap, yeah. So despite the fact that the industry has uh, advanced a lot over the past 10 years, I would say, and it's going through a transition, uh, there is a dig- digitization happening in the construction sector and concrete industry, uh, but there is a still a long way to go uh, before we can see that the industry is driving the innovation and they are uh, basically at the forefront of the change uh, that we would like to see. And the, uh, the academic side would follow. It should be like that. The industry uh, should generate those problems and pain points and bring it to the uh, research level, whether it's in-house research or academic research. And uh, the research people would find solutions for for those uh, pain points. Um, Unfortunately, it's not at that point yet. Uh, We see uh, the academic world and the research world is far more advanced than what's being applied in the field. Uh, but um, I'm hoping that with the new generation of engineers joining the for for workforce and uh, the fact that they're they're demanding technology, we see more acceleration on the construction side and the practice side uh, that would uh, basically adopt or generate uh, interest, new interest in the academic world to design solutions for real world problems. Yeah, that would definitely be excellent, especially if just. Getting a little closer between the two and bridging that chasm, I think, would be very beneficial to the whole industry. So speaking of developing those those kind of solutions, when you first founded Geotech what, and entered the industry, what kind of um, challenges did you face? So, yeah, starting a company is, uh, is difficult. It's, uh, there are so many challenges that you will face at the beginning. Uh, you know, well, we, we definitely had to build a team and that's the starting point. You have to have, uh, the right, uh, the right people in the right places, uh, the people who are passionate about the vision of, uh, the company, which for us was revolutionizing the concrete industry. 
So that was one of the main challenges to bring different people with different backgrounds and expertise, uh, but with the same vision uh, to work together uh, in one small startup. And uh, because we were designing basically electronic devices and softwares, uh, so we had to bring electronic engineers, concrete researchers, uh, software developers uh, to develop the technology. And obviously we had to put in place um, uh, a uh, revenue engine, uh, comply, uh, well, uh, people from marketing, sales and support to run that, um, that side of the business as well. So building that team was one of the main challenges that we had at the beginning. And um, Geotech was bootstrapped from day one, so we never raised money, and uh, and that also came with some 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 of its own challenges. We had to do some consulting work on the side to generate some revenue and put that money in the R and D and development. Uh, so it, we had to run very lean, uh, and that forced us actually, in hindsight, um, to think more strategically about what we do and how we can uh, gain maximum ROI in everything we would do, whether it was uh, sales, marketing, product development. And it forced us to be very creative in different different ways. Uh, and uh, I, would, I would say that, that actually worked out really well for us. Uh, so those, those were two of the main challenges, uh, but uh, like any other startup, we, we had to deal with uh, many other business related challenges. On the construction side of things, um, the main challenge was, uh, as I briefly mentioned, uh, the gap that is still there between what's done in the academic world and the industry. The industry is very conservative, and that's understandable. You know, the risks the risks are very high when you want to adopt or implement new technology. Um, the, for example, if you if you use a method in the design of a high rise concrete structure that is not approved by regulators, and it results in a collapse of uh, of some sort, uh, you will be liable for that. So uh, construction in nature has become very conservative to follow regulations, the standards, and uh, guidelines uh, to prevent uh, those uh, those liability issues. And uh, so we had to basically convince the industry that there is a new technology for monitoring concrete properties, and how can you use it without having any standards for it, and how how you can benefit from it in that sort of ecosystem. So that that was uh, that was one of the main challenges bringing new technologies to the market that is very heavily uh, regulated. Uh, and uh, I think we have done a good job in the sense that we made it so simple for the end users to adopt the technology that it was a no brainer for them. And at the end of the day, when they started adopting technology, the regulators had to follow. It's similar to Uber. Uh, so to speak, that uh, you know, when they started to the market, there was no regulation on the tax, uh, on the on the way that they were running uh, their business. Uh, there was a huge uh, backlash from the taxi industry and regulators in the cities. Uh, but because the value was so much uh, high for the end users and customers, including us, um, that we were using the app on a daily basis, uh, they uh, the regulators had no choice but to adopt and uh, basically pivot their current uh, regulations to allow for something like Uber. So we think that the industry, like construction, if they have to change, it has the technology has to be so simple and bring at least ten times value to drive the adoption. Yeah, I can see where otherwise, if it didn't bring that ten times value there'd be very little incentive for them to kind of change or so i think one thing that i've found very impressive since joining geotech is all of the avenues in which we've made it so simple for them to em embrace this but also the education the education that it, it couldn't have been easy at, at the outset to try to educate people on these concepts and then have them to believe you and then to uh, buy into these products like you said different so I know Geotech, aside from just Smart Rock, there's a ton of innovative solutions that um, the, the company has produced. I was really, I would love to know more about how you identify uh, the need for those solutions in the marketplace. Yeah, so obviously Smart Rock is our flagship product um, that is already used in more than 7,000 projects worldwide. Uh, but back in the day, 10 years ago, when we started Geotech, we uh, offered our first product for concrete permeability uh, assessment. And uh, that was called Archon that would measure, that, that, that measured the electrical resistivity of concrete, which is a parameter that you can correlate to other properties, including perme uh, permeability, concrete cracking, and, and even uh, concrete setting. 
So um, uh, that was purely based on research that we had uh, previously done uh, in, in academia. And we brought that product to life uh, by building Archon. Then as we went out to the market and we offered this product to the market, we learned more about the other needs in the industry. So as we were talking with customers, whether there were testing labs, uh, consulting engineers, uh, inspectors, construction companies, and concrete producers, um, we wanted to learn more about the real pain points. You know, and and you know, I, I briefly mentioned that there's a gap between the industry and academia, and that gap also exists in the understanding of what's actually the main pain points in the industry. So we learned new things that we didn't really know in the past from the academic world. So we had to work with these stakeholders to understand their pain points more accurately and, and see what is in, in their mind, what keeps them awake at night, and so to speak, and, and, and design solutions that would help them with those real pain points. And that's how we developed uh, PERMA for colorite permeability. And as we got into the market, we realized that there is a, there is a huge need uh, for uh, inspection, accurate inspection of uh, bridges uh, and parking garages for corrosion. And we got into the development of i and Excel for corrosion monitoring. And in each of these products, not only we wanted to develop a solution for the end users, but also um, we wanted to bring a new angle to it, a technology that wasn't used in the past, a, uh, a, a method that was innovative to add us that 10 times return for these uh, uh, stakeholders. So for example, in, in the case of i we developed the only corrosion device in the world, corrosion detection device in the world that would not need a connection to the electrical, uh, electrical connection to the rebar uh, for measurements, unlike many other products that are in the market. So with those changes, we wanted to make it so simple for the end users that at the end of the day, when we release a product to the market, uh, they would start using it, although there's no regulation or standard or guideline for it from um, different organizations. So that's the portfolio of product, whether we were at the initial design stage or uh, during the, the delivery and placement of concrete or after that, while the concrete was in uh, service, we decided to cover the whole range of uh, needs in the industry from, uh, from day one through, uh, all the way during the life cycle of concrete so that uh, all the stakeholders can benefit from our solutions. And uh, the, 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 the idea and the logic here was that if you bring value to all of the stakeholders, at the end of the day, they collectively together would drive the adoption. If you, if you bring value to one, one player here, the other players may not be open to adopting technology or benefiting from that technology. And uh, to get the maximum value, you have an you have to have an integrated solution that brings data throughout the life cycle of concrete and connects all of that together in one place. And that's what, why we, uh, in a way, develop technologies for all of these um, market segments within the concrete industry. I, I can see or two where you have solutions now between SmartMix at the beginning uh, to smart rock during and after pour to all these um, post construction solutions, we really do have uh, a whole suite of products. Where, especially when you're starting out and you're starting with just the the uh, NDT devices, I, I can see where that would build a, a ton of trust with people, which made it probably easier to launch smart rock when you did. I think it was in 2015 or so, right? Yes. So that that's yeah that's a very good point. So the um, the fact that we had a portfolio of products that were designed and developed in the concrete industry and were offering already uh, solutions and um, addressing pain points in other parts of the market built that credibility so that when we release a small rock, we were not just um, a device manufacturer uh, for for that market. To them, we were a solution provider. Uh, building that uh, basically pipeline of products during the life cycle of concrete. Uh, so that, that that's a very important point. And the other thing was that we wanted to uh, educate the market. And so our approach has been always a knowledge, as a knowledge-based company, we wanted to uh, educate the industry, bring solutions, not only as a device manufacturer, but, but as a as a company that is that cares about the industry, as a company that 
that is there for our end users. So uh, we go beyond, our team goes beyond what we are offering as a product. They, they are working very closely with our end users to design solutions for them and help them uh, with the implementation of our products in their practice you know, uh, and how they can benefit from the data and anal analysis of data. We're all the way um, working with them along the, uh, alongside their, their team and their projects to gain maximum benefit from these products. And then uh, the other aspect that we brought to the business was uh, uh, leveraging the data. So with these products, uh, we already use in thousands and thousands of projects. You can imagine that we have collected millions of data points uh, from concrete that is being designed and cured in different conditions and ambient uh, conditions worldwide. So with that data, we built AI capabilities in our in our products uh, to have smart suggestions in the in the uh, solutions that we're developing for our end users. So they can get maximum value, not only from the actual measurement, but from the analysis that comes after hand from, from uh, AI capability that is either in the sensor or the software that, for example, uh, verifies the strengths uh, calculation or predicts the performance of concrete. Uh, these are things that uh, end users uh, just relying on their own data would have not been able to do, but collectively, because they are leveraging the pool of data from all the other users worldwide, um, we have been able to develop something like that for them uh, that we're really excited about. I want to touch on something you just mentioned about, you know, you go above and beyond for support and working with end users. I feel that uh, yourself and uh, Poria are you very uniquely situated and it kind of goes back to something you mentioned earlier with that, even with your time in academia, when you're getting into the space, there's a lot of things you have to learn about the construction space that probably people that stay in academia don't know. And launching into this, you've, you've really got to know the construction industry developing the solutions. I'm wondering, since you started the company, how have you seen the construction industry change or evolve? So yeah, there's there's a lot of change that uh, has happened uh, over the past ten year ten years in the construction industry. Some of it is related to the technology advancements. So electronics has uh, have become very very cheap over the past ten years. Uh, uh, that has uh, resulted in lowering the cost of sensors and equipment and tools. So that's one big change. That the cost of data has gone down sig significantly. The uh, data access is now very easy everywhere uh, in, in job sites. So that's another advantage uh, from technology perspective that has resulted in the adoption of technology over the past 10 years in the construction sector, in particular, not, all, not, only, not, not only construction, but also other sectors. So the cost of technology and availability of electronics uh, is one consideration that uh, we need to um, to think about that has resulted in this uh, change. Uh, the other side is that the new generation of workforce that are joining the industry, young engineers and practitioners, they, they are grown up with technology. They are raised with the smartphones and tablets and, and data and internet. And so when they come to the workforce as a project manager, superintendent, or a, a Red MX QC manager, they demand technology. That's that's all they know, and that uh, they there's no other way for them to basically do their own uh, their day to day job other than uh, leveraging whether it's software or other types of technology. So that has created a pool in the market, and um, with that we see that there are tons of new uh, startups, technology starts uh, uh, startups in the construction sector, mostly in the digitization of data. Uh, these are softwares for productivity in the construction sector and also uh, device manufacturers and tools and electronics and IoT and AI companies as well. So uh, they are responding to the need that is created in the market, uh, basically these new engineers and workforce that are demand technology and have that leverage, which is the cost of technology development has gone down significantly. So I think these two factors are deriving the uh, change and adoption uh, and it's we're at a very very interesting time i think uh there is an acceleration that is happening in in that side of the world by uh by seeing new technologies used in the construction sector 
uh, not only today, but also in the next uh, few years, I would say this, this acceleration will continue. Well, that actually dovetails quite well into my last question uh, before I let you go, Ali, is, you know, in the next 10 years, maybe 2032, do you have any predictions or guesses of what the industry might look like or what new technologies might be out there? Uh, yeah, so there are um, there are some of the technologies that are at their early stages. You know, some for example, the three um, D printing of concrete is one of those technologies that it's at early stages. Um, uh, it will have some time until it it's get uh, it gets wide adoption. Um, so, uh, but but if it gets adopt adopted and it becomes economical and safe to do. Um, to build structures using 3D printing uh, robots. And that's a huge uh, change uh, in the way that we build structures, and especially in remote areas. You can imagine that you can have this 3D printing uh, equipment uh, deployed remotely in a village somewhere you know, in the middle of uh, nowhere to build a structure, whereas uh, right now you need to have engineers, concrete suppliers, you know, uh, professional people who can build that structure. And that may not be possible everywhere in the world. So that's one of the uh, technologies that I th think uh, will will get uh, more evolved over the next uh, 10, 20 years. Uh, drones are also addressing some of the big needs in the inspection side of the world um, in the construction market. Uh, when you when you want to do inspection of a bridge or a high rise. Um, you, if you want to monitor and track uh, construction pr process during its uh, early stages when you're building a structure, drones are playing a big role here to capture and document images and uh, analyze that data. Uh, so that's also one of the uh, technologies, and especially you know, not not only drones but also robots in general that uh, that are coming to the industry to automate some of the activities that were done previously by humans. And um, the last uh, last maybe uh, item that is uh, is going to happen is um, uh, data analytics, especially artificial intelligence. I think uh, construction industry uh, inherently contains a massive amount of data. There is like there there are billions and billions of data points uh, that are collected during the life cycle of a structure, whether it's at the design stage or construction or after that in service. And historically, this data wasn't uh, wasn't stored in one single place. It wasn't integrated. There was no digitization uh, in in mass. So we see that now with the softwares and technologies that are adopted, that digitization is happening. That centralization of data is happening. So we are getting easily access to a massive amount of data. So naturally, the next uh, step would be to leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to go through this data and generate new insight that wasn't possible in the past. So I, I think the next wave of technologies would, would rely on arti artificial intelligence to uh, mine the data and bring even more value than the actual digital technologies themselves to the end users. So uh, those are the, the three things on the um, technology side that I can see. But, all, but also on the material side, there's, there's a huge uh, opportunity to address the um, concrete material um, as, a, as a combination of different ingredients. So you can, you can think of a, think of a uh, concrete material as a recipe, and this recipe can be optimized to achieve the same previous performance that you expected from the concrete, but with less uh, impact on um, on uh, on the environment, with more sustainable approach that would result in less carbon emission, carbon dioxide emissions. So uh, I think uh, with the new technologies that are addressing the carbon footprint of the concrete industry uh, by reducing the amount of cement that is used by improving its efficiency, uh, we can see a big impact. Uh, that uh, is going to uh, be achieved uh, in the concrete industry by lowering its uh, GHG emissions over the next 10 years, I would say. Definitely sounds like there's a lot of exciting uh, opportunities coming up in the con construction space. I'm just picturing people-less construction sites with 3D printing buildings and robots and drones flying all around. <laughs> it sounds pretty exciting. 
So, Ali, I want to thank you again for coming on the show today. Uh, I know the listeners appreciate it. So once again, thank you. Thank you for having me, Eric.